Hey you guys, it's Brandy Chanel. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to your love in marriage Huntsville season three, episode 15 review. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, you guys, so let's go ahead and talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville, okay? So I have here in my notes, um, the episode opens up with Maurice and Kimmy are looking at land. Kim Kimmy is under the impression that Maurice is wanting to build their home there. She's making all kind of plans. Oh, I like the trees. Oh, I like the, you know, the hill, all the other stuff. Skirt, skirt. He's only, you know, trying to make spec houses there. So it's he's not really building there. He's not really wanting to build their home there. He's wanting to build a spec house. So he's basically wanting to build a house to sell. And Kimmy is like, oh, well, we didn't have this discussion. On top of that, you know, he this is supposed to be her real estate project, her next real estate project. Okay, they didn't dis they didn't discuss that either. He didn't call Don Martel. Uh, uncle, uncle, such and such and all this. And Martel don't even have a builder's license. And that's what Kimmy is saying. Like you make these plans, you put all the moving pieces together and then just kind of dump it on her lap. And it's so inconsiderate and so selfish. Like you, how are you going to make a plan that she's supposed to be involved in and then tell her after you've already made the plans, like you already have the plans in place. You're, then you're going to tell her that it's her project. Like, no, that's not how any of this works. So then they are talking about um, Monster. So he's supposed to do all the picking up and dropping off. So then he kind of diverts the conversation and talking about Monster only to come back and ask her if she can do some of the picking up. And it's like, sir, no, Kimmy is a better woman than me because I would be like, no, 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 no. This is this is the reason why Kimmy really did not want Monster to come is because she knows not that she didn't want him to come because she didn't want to raise no more kids, but she knew that Maurice would stick her with more of the responsibility of taking care of Monster, and she didn't want to do that. And I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. It's it's truly inconsiderate. Mar Maurice is not that much different from his brother. He's not. Um, he's just a little bit more respectful with it, I guess. I mean, even though it's disrespectful, he puts it in a, a respectful manner, which means he's not he's not putting it in a way where it's I'm demanding you do something. He's kind of laughing and giggling and, you know, kind of just kind of shrugging it off like, oh, you know, you can you do it? You know, something like that. So. He he's not that much far, he's not that far off from his um from his brother. Okay, so we have Martel is over his mom's house and he says that his mom is a part of his village. I find that very funny that you can have a village, but you're trying to take the kids away from Mel because she has a village as well. That's very funny to me, but okay, moving on. Um Martel tells his mom that he and Maurice are going to a therapist because you know, they have a lot going on and they need guidance. Martel's mom says he doesn't need a therapist, be your own therapist. So, and then she goes on to say that, you know, Mel had Martel working so hard, you know, and used to make her mad, you know, he, she gonna run my boy into the ground. Well, I mean, isn't this their whole marriage based on this this traditional, you know, is, isn't it going through this whole additional, uh, traditional approach to marriage? Like, isn't the man supposed to go out and work hard while the woman, you know, while the woman is having children and taking care of her kids? Because that's all Martel keeps saying. Like, you know, Mark, you know, Melanie wasn't a good mom. She was always working and out, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it shouldn't be a problem to Martel to work hard. OK, let's not forget Mel was really the brains behind the operation. Yes. You know, Martel, he may have built stuff. You know, he may have did all the heavy loading. But let it let's be clear when it came down to business and getting things moving and putting shit in place and organizing. That was Melody Holt. OK, because let uh, <laughs> let Melody's brother tell it. 
Martel couldn't even pass a simple ass test. So at least he can do his work hard while she's taking care of him, her kids, and working herself. I'm sorry, Miss Marlene, but you're wrong. You're wrong, baby. Then his mother says, just because you got a woman pregnant, so what? I'm not losing no sleep over it. Well, you wouldn't lose no sleep over it because you weren't the one who got cheated on and it wasn't your man who had a baby on you. So it's great that you're not losing sleep over it. I hope you feel some type of empathy for your daughter-in-law. See, Mar we know now what's wrong with Martel. Like, we know now. You, you had a mom that did not take any that did not allow you to take any accountability she didn't hold you accountable for anything so that now we see where it come where martel gets it from okay he's been enabled and marlene has definitely been his enabler okay so then we find out that martel's mom is the one who told tank the son about about melanie song being about him he goes well why would you do that you know we need to prevent that you don't want to paint me negatively like Martel, like I get it. We don't want the kids to know what's really going on, but you wouldn't, but it all goes back to you cheating. <laughs> like if you didn't want any negative, you know, rumors to be out there about you, then maybe you shouldn't have got your ass on TV, having a whole side chick and getting a pregnant. You know, if the, these things could have been prevented first with you. Okay. Had you not achieved it, A, B and C would not have happened. Okay. So Let's not, it's like, it's everybody else's fault but yours, right? Okay, so then she says, well, don't take that up with me. Take it up with your ex-wife. He's like, why are you acting like that? She said, because I'm sleepy. <laughs> Just like an old country-ass mama. So they talk about the Destiny race, and um, he invites her to the Destiny race. She says she's going to come. So that was it on that one. Martell and Maurice um, are having their therapy session. Um, Marceau was supposed to be there, but he did not come. I put in my notes that Marceau is by far the most annoying on the show. He is the most annoying. I think I find him more repulsive than Martel. How are you going to get your ugly, bad built body ass on television and sit up here and uh, critique this man on his profession, but you can barely get black running? Like, didn't all your employees leave? So who are you to tell this grown man about his profession and what and what kind of therapist he is? You can't even run your own establishment, boo. And from what I heard, people still ain't uh received their little chocolate in a bottle. So fix you before you can be out here critiquing people. And it was it's very unfortunate because Dr. Francis be dropping some some nuggets for their asses. But you know, you you when you are a male whose ego is so fragile that you think you are beyond correction, uh, you you're not you're never gonna grow. You're never gonna grow. That's why he's gonna continue to be des that's why he's gonna continue to be depressed and trying to depress Tish and all and everyone else around him. Um I don't know. Okay, no, not that. Maurice says that he never goes on vacations and that he deals, he just deals with stress, right? So Dr. Francis is basically telling him like a vacation is an escape. You ain't dealing with nothing if you're trying to escape. So you're just sitting in it, really? Like you're just, you're just, just dealing with the stress. You're not, you're not acknowledging it. You're not, you know, doing anything to prevent it. You're just dealing with it. And he, I, it's just Dr. Francis really dropped some, some knowledge on them. He said that Maurice had two wives because he was sitting up here saying that he sees this, his future self. And, you know, is the person that he loves is kind of, he's compete. She's competing with his job and, you know, no, 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 no. It's not Kimmy. It's you. You created this, okay? You was like this when you met Kimmy. So it's not Kimmy's fault. It's actually you created this atmosphere to where now you have two wives, your work and your home wife, okay? This is what you created. So I'm I'm so glad that Dr. Francis, he broke it all the way down for him. Um, And then he got to Martel and Martel was like, he basically, Martel is not depressed. He's hurt. Because he go he went through something that he 
created, you know, that he uh, did to himself. And he's not really depressed, but he's hurt because he did lose everything. He tried to back it up and say he didn't lose everything, but he actually did. He he lost. He did lose a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. Divorce, divorce can can affect a lot, not only mentally but financially, career wise, homes and everything. That that takes a toll on someone. So that's on him. But then when he get, <laughs> but then when he gets in the confessionals, he finds a way to turn everything back on Melody. He takes like is is no accountability on his part. You know, he's saying that's what I was trying to get Mel to do was spend time with the kids and not neglect the kids. Like Martel wants to play up this. I'm a great dad. I'm a dad, you know, persona, because that's all he has. We know he's not faithful. We know he's not smart. We know he can't pass no tests. He know we know he's not a good businessman. So what else he got? I'm a good dad. That's all he got. That's all he got. Um, so I think now we are at the um we're at the um event, the Destiny Race to Destiny event, and Melody and Tiffany cheated. So they all, you know, they all start running. It's a 5K race or something like that. And Tiffany and Melody came back. Girl, they weren't even sweating. Like, how are you plan on running, but you got on a full beat? Girl, bye. And, and a lace front. Girl, bye. Stop playing with me. Um, Tiffany brings up her anniversary. She's like, why? I don't know why every time we have to get into an argument. And then she makes, she says something to Martel. And then Destiny comes in and she's like, you know, Martel, you say stuff. And then, you know, Melanie gets riled up. And then Martel brings up a good point. Like, I y'all can't control me, so why is it always me? You know what I'm saying? How come she has to react? And I feel like everyone focuses on Martel and don't see that Mel does the same shit as Martel. But because Martel did what he did, it's kind of hard to, to, to empathize with him sometimes, okay? So I get it, but it's like, you know, Melanie be starting some shit too, okay? But y'all always focus on Martel. And it's not right. He he does have a point sometimes when he be talking. But then Destiny did something that I didn't like. She's like, da 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 like she, ye like she was yelling and then got in his face. And then Martel was like, I don't see that. From, I can't take disrespect from women. Although I feel like she was being disrespectful. So if a man did it, would it be okay? Cause you keep saying you're you don't you can't take disrespect from women, but so lets me know that you have no smoke when a man does the same thing to you, okay? But I do think what Destiny's did was it was disrespectful, and I hope y'all checked it out because Melody didn't she didn't come in and say shit, she ain't say nothing, she ain't say nothing. So Destiny, you just told her that you don't say nothing that she don't say nothing when it when it comes between you and Tiffany. Or she doesn't take up for you when you and when you and Tiffany are arguing. But now you're in her business. Once again, we don't know your business, so I would just stay out of it. But then, oh, Miss Marlene came over there. You that's that you don't have to speak up for Melody. That's not your husband, your ex husband. Like this right here. No, 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 no. You don't do that to me. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell y'all one thing about me. I don't do that. Respect your elder stuff. Okay. I don't care whose mama you is. I don't care how old you are. You're going to get your damn hands out my face. Because first of all, I wasn't talking to you. You wasn't there, boo-boo. Okay? <laughs> you wasn't there. Okay? I was there so I can speak on it. But you wasn't. Okay? And then um, Tiffany interrupts. She said, well, it was our anniversary. And <laughs> Miss Marlene was like, well, happy anniversary. And then, like, everybody started laughing, which I just thought was like, at this moment, I'm kind of like, I understand where Tiffany is coming from. Like every, every event that I've been with, with y'all, every, um, little thing that we've had or a group gathering is always ended up being the Martell and Melody show. They keep saying Martell show, but really it's the Melody and Martell show. Okay. They both be doing the same shit. Okay. Um, and I just felt like it was just stupid. And it's like, Martel said up there, don't talk to me, talk, don't talk at me, talk to me. 
And then he says in his confessionals, I'm glad my mom was there. You know, I'm a grown man. Don't yell at me like that. I didn't want to raise my voice to destiny. You a grown man, but you just sat up here and had your mom speak for you. Like, make that make sense, sir. Your mom just sat up and spoke for you, but you're supposed to be a grown man. Okay. So then um, Marlene and Vanessa, who is uh, Mel's mom, is, you know, they're talking about whatever the case may be. And here come Miss Wanda J. Blige, shall come up there. I was talking to the, I was uh talking to the um to Melanie and Martell about getting back to Yelda. And then Marlene was like, <laughs> then Marlene was like, I'm out of here. I'm, you know, I stay in my lane. So I'm out of here. I was like, damn, I wish you would have stayed in your lane like five minutes ago, but that's fine. You can leave. Good idea. Bye-bye. You know, glad you're gone. Okay. So then um Vanessa and and Wanda end up getting to it. So Van Vanessa talks about the hair comment that Wanda made a long time ago on social media. And she then <laughs> she then brought up, you know, you got and don't you got a boyfriend and a husband? She do. Okay, didn't you have a sex tape? <laughs> didn't you have a sex tape with one of Marceau's brothers? Ma'am, stop doing that. Don't do that. No, you got some skeletons in your closet too, Miss Vanessa. But anyway, um, anyway, so they get to they're arguing back and forth, and Wanda let her know, listen, I don't care about I, you can't throw nothing back in my face. I know I got a, a husband and a boy and a, a boyfriend. So I think a long time ago, um Wanda's husband, they've been separated for years. And so she got a boyfriend or whatever the case may be. So I don't know why they just won't divorce, but whatever the case may be. So then, you know, Vanessa like, woman, please, woman, please take, go ahead and worry about you and Marceau and Tish with your little hands and your little brain. And Wanda wasn't ready. I don't think Wanda was ready. Um, <laughs> She wasn't. <laughs> and then Vanessa was like, I don't do ghetto. I, I don't do ghetto. And Miss, <laughs> Miss Wanda Oh, you know when I'm doing ghetto, I'll take this wig off, I'll take this earrings off, and I'll take my shoes off, and I'm going to get in your ass talking about ghetto, okay? You don't know, I'm not ghetto, okay? I was like, oh my God, this is, this is ghetto. Like, I hate to call black people ghetto, but it's like, it is what it is, okay? Like, Wanda, you, Wanda just do too much. She do too much. Let me tell y'all. The only reason why Wanda get as much airtime as she does is because she brings the mess, okay? She brings the mess. Marlene ain't really bringing the mess like that. She's so-called trying to stay in her lane. Vanessa ain't trying to do that because she's too classy-based. So it's like Wanda brings the mess. Wanda don't give a fuck. So <clears throat> Melody first comes in between them, and she is, you know, trying to calm it on down or whatever the case may be. And then Tish comes and then in the middle of them talking, Tish go to Vanessa was like, well, y'all both do that. You're a cyber bully. And I'm like, okay, if you're talking about the ghetto comment, well, Tish, your mom did approach uh, Melody and talking about her marriage, something that got nothing to do with her. And Vanessa spoke on it. So it's like, you know, it, there's a difference. And she says that um, <clears throat> she didn't like, that Vanessa called her mom ghetto. So I get where I get where Tish is coming from, but still she she cannot equate what her mom does to the other moms because the other moms don't be in a business like that. Whereas Wanda is. So, you know, she so at some point they're arguing and Tish is placing her hands on Vanessa. And Vanessa's like, get your hands off of me. And even though I don't believe Tisha was being malicious. Like, I think she was doing it as a gesture, as a, you know, let's calm down type of gesture. Gesture. I, I don't think she should have put her hands on Miss Vanessa at that moment because it was heated. So that wasn't the smartest thing to do, right? Um, and she keeps saying respectfully, respectfully, but she's yelling, right? She's yelling. So there's nothing respectful about yelling because you just got mad with Kimmy for yelling at your mom. So now you're doing the same thing to Vanessa. So they come to an agreement that their two moms, 
defending their daughters. And, you know, Melody is telling Miss Wanda, look, we all have stuff about ourselves that we need to control. And she said, well, that's just who I am. That's just who I am. And I'm just like, Wanda, like you just do too much and you're, you're doing entirely too much, ma'am. And I'm going to need you to stop. I'm going to need you to stop. You're too old for that. I'm glad that Tish pulled her mom aside and told her like she don't need to be doing that because it's all, you know, I'm a fight. I'm going to do this. It's like you are damn near 60. Okay. If you're not already, your daughter is in her forties. If she ain't out here fighting, you don't need to be out here fighting. And I'm glad the decision was made to, um, to not have her around. You know, she, you like Tish, you should have been came to this conclusion, boo. Like you can't just, there is certain places where you can't invite your mom everywhere. You can't. So any places where Mel, Mel and Martell are going to be, she don't need to be there. She just don't. Okay. You need to limit that. L limit it to barbecues with just you and Marcel. Okay. You and you and the grand, her grandbabies. She don't need to be around the entire group, you guys. So that is Love and Marriage Huntsville, you guys. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about this week's episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, toodles.